Brandon Knight and Ty Lawson, two point guards who were drafted in 2011 and 2009 respectively. At one point, both of them were considered to be rising young players. In 2013, Sports Illustrated ranked Ty Lawson as a top 10 point guard in the league. In 2014, Bleacher Report named Brandon Knight as a top 11 point guard. And both of these players were certainly on the rise, after they both had successful breakout seasons. However, nowadays, literally nobody talks about them anymore. In fact, Lawson has been out of the NBA since 2018, while Brandon Knight has spent his last few years warming up the bench. So, what on earth happened to these guys? It looked like they were on the rise as they approached their mid-twenties, which is when players are supposed to be in their primes. But instead of stepping into the spotlights, they regressed and neither of them made that leap. How's it going folks? My name's Andy and in this video, let's talk about Brandon Knight and Ty Lawson, and how their careers fell off quite drastically for different reasons. Let's start with Brandon Knight. While he's still barely hanging on to his NBA career, he's been nothing more than a bench warmer. But back when he was 22, 23 years old, he was averaging around 17 points and 5 assists per game, as the starting point guard of a Milwaukee Bucks team that just started rebuilding. While his raw stats looked pretty good, his efficiency was mediocre along with his defense. However, these are two areas of the game that young point guards typically struggle with. And the Bucks had time, they were weighing their options on who to keep and who to let go, as they would rebuild for the future. Unfortunately, Knight would not be a part of that. So let's stop for a second and take a look at the Bucks roster at the time and what young prospects they actually had. They had a rookie Giannis and a sophomore Chris Middleton. That was it, and neither of them played the same position as Brandon Knight. If you combine that with the fact that before the Bucks gave up on him, the team was doing fairly well. Before the 2015 trade deadline, the Bucks had a record of 30 and 23. However, after the Brandon Knight trade, they finished the season going just 11 and 18, finishing with a 41-41 record. What's even worse was that the players the Bucks got back in the deal were Tyler Ennis and Miles Plumley, neither of whom did anything on the Bucks. I remember back then, this trade was a shocker and even the rest of the NBA was surprised. Believe it or not, there was a time when Brandon Knight had a decent amount of suitors who were ready to take a chance on him. As the 8th overall pick on a young team, Knight was essentially just thrown away. Peter Fagan, the president of the Bucks, justified this trade by stating, Quote, We're going to surround our Giannis's and Jabari's with building blocks of players that make them better that bring us closer to not just a playoff team, but a championship team. He simply did not believe that Brandon Knight would be a championship caliber point guard. Eventually, he would turn out to be correct, as Brandon Knight never improved afterwards, and soon Giannis would take the ball handling and playmaking duties into his own hands. It just wasn't a good fit in the long term to have a point guard with an inconsistent jump shot who can't defend either. After this trade, Knight himself said, quote, We had a good time while we played. I think we were just scratching the surface. Who knows where we could have went to? I mean, I'm sure the Bucks now aren't losing any sleep over it, but back then, it was a big topic of discussion. The Phoenix Suns, on the other hand, had quite a lot of faith in him. They had enough faith to give him a whopping 5-year $70 million contract in the summer of 2015. Immediately, Knight would hit the ground running, averaging a career high in points, but as a team, the Suns were still very bad. What followed was a string of awful injuries. Knight would suffer an adductor strain, then he got surgery after getting a hernia, then he would get demoted to the bench and continue to suffer nagging injuries. Then, to top it all off, in the summer of 2017, while playing a pickup game in his home state of Florida, he suffered a torn ACL. That was the camel that broke the straw's back. Knight would miss the entire 2017-18 season, then significant parts of the next season too, and now he's a bench warmer. 
While the fall of Brandon Knight could be attributed to his injuries, there was no sign that he was going to become a star regardless. While it did look like it sometimes and many fans were hopeful when he was younger, he was not able to fix his weaknesses as he got older. The poor defense, well actually, he had one of the worst career defensive ratings ever, and along with his erratic jump shot, they've always been the biggest knocks on his game. Nowadays, it's pretty much too late for him to fix it. It doesn't help that his previous teams were all really bad too, which is why he never played a single playoff game. Sadly, he might not ever get another chance to be the starting point guard ever again. But perhaps he'll always be remembered for this. Or maybe this. Next up is Ty Lawson. While many NBA fans have long forgotten about Lawson, it wasn't too long ago when he was captivating the world with his quickness and handles. At just 5'10", he was one of the shortest players in the league, but he had a ton of talent in that stocky frame. Drafted in 2009 with just the 18th overall pick, Lawson played behind Chauncey Billups whom he says helped him a lot with his development as a point guard. As the years progressed, he slowly worked his way into the starting lineup despite the doubters having a hard time believing he'd ever be a starting caliber player, let alone a borderline all-star. By 2014, he was averaging nearly 18 points and 9 assists per game. He was on the verge of breaking out into an all-star, and honestly everyone was expecting him to do so. But then everything came crashing down. While Lawson made significant strides in his game, what really haunted him was an alcohol addiction. It was a problem that he struggled through even back in college, but it got worse as he got older. From 2008 to 2015, Lawson got arrested five different times for driving under the influences or crimes related to those offenses, like trying to avoid prosecution. After 2015, his career was never the same again and it's reflected in his numbers. You can clearly see when he dropped off. Following an arrest in July of 2015, where he had to spend a month in rehab, the Denver Nuggets let him go. What happened afterwards was one of the biggest falloffs we'd ever see. The Nuggets would send him to the Houston Rockets, and they did give him another chance. Lawson came off the bench, but it was clear that he was never engaged and still struggling through his issues with alcohol. Sadly, this led to another arrest a few months later in December of 2015. According to this report, this is what was said. Lawson, having lost his starting job and with a two-game suspension beginning Saturday, after he pleaded guilty to driving while impaired, his trade value could be low. Lawson was suspended two games by the NBA based on his guilty plea in November for driving while impaired and a lane usage violation after leaving a party in Denver in January. He has a January 14 sentencing hearing where he faces up to 180 days in jail. Even though the Rockets interim head coach J.B. Biggerstaff had high hopes for Lawson to return back to form, it never came to fruition. And shortly after, he was traded again. In the 2016-17 season with the Kings, he had a decent year but other teams just did not want to take that risk. So after that, he signed with a team in China, but then he came back and signed with the Wizards where he played in a few playoff games, then he went back to China. As of now, he's still there and we don't know if he's gonna have another shot at the NBA again, but since he's still fairly young at 32 years old, it's possible. However, his reputation has been absolutely murdered, and maybe it was unfair as people don't know the whole story. According to Lawson himself, he said, quote, It was a dark time, I feel like. Just try to tune people out and I think it affected basketball and confidence. Everybody was like, oh, he has a problem. I have heard that. I don't know actually what people think about me in other locker rooms. Because, I mean, maybe they think I am a problem around the team. I'm not. I'm probably one of the chillest guys ever. While Lawson has always been a good teammate, he can't really control anything if he gets blackballed by the league. 
Anyway, that's all folks, that's basically what happened to Brandon Knight and Ty Lawson. Two players who've been drafted a while ago, but there was a time when they looked like they were about to make that leap into stardom. However, neither of them did, and outside factors, some of which were out of their controls, ultimately became their downfall. And a few years from now, they'll be completely forgotten, if they haven't been already. Anyway, thank you everybody so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know in the comments your thoughts about these two players. As always, I'll see you next time. Peace.